My name is Linda van den Jeffer. I'm the Vulture Project Manager at BirdLife South Africa. And as my name suggests, I work in vulture conservation. And the reason why many people are working in vulture conservation is because our vultures are in deep, deep trouble. Um, South Africa's got nine species of vultures and four of these are critically endangered. Um, that means that, that four of our vulture species are one step away from being extinct in the wild. So the reasons why vultures are threatened are there's a multiple of threats and it's very complex. Um, you know, vultures, because they're big birds, they fly into electricity infrastructure, they collide with electricity infrastructure, they're electrocuted, they drown in farm dams, um, but the most vulture declines have been attributed to poisoning. Um, in fact, studies have shown, shown that 60% of vulture mortalities is attributable to poisoning. And that's poisoning in various forms. Um, it can be because of poachers. Um, poachers frequently lace the carcasses of um, poached animals with um, poison because they don't want circling vultures to give it away the position of the carcass. And they can literally kill hundreds of birds um, in one go. Um, vultures are also poisoned by poison baits put out by farmers to get rid of problem animals such as caracal or um, jackal. Um, and then we've got secondary poisoning, um, you know, such as lead poisoning, when carcasses are shot with lead ammunition and vultures come and they feed on those carcasses and they are poisoned by lead in return. Since 2016, I've been investigated um, the impact of lead poisoning on South Africa's vultures. It's an aspect that has not received much research attention in previous years and I was specifically tasked by BirdLife South Africa to do that. Um, first and foremost, I set out to determine the extent of lead poisoning um, in South Africa's vultures, if at all, if it was present at all. And we found actually alarming levels of lead in our Af South African vultures. Um, my study specifically focused on white-backed and cape vultures, and we found on average that over 66% of birds had um, elevated levels of lead. So we knew it was a problem in vultures, um, but we also wanted to determine if this was a problem in other raptors or large terrestrial birds such as bustards, etc. So we also um, investigated the lead levels in those birds and we actually found that none of those species seemed to be exposed to lead, at least not on the level that we observed in vultures. So that led us to conclude that this was specifically a feature of scavenging birds. And because vultures are obligate scavengers, and by that I mean they feed almost exclusively on carrion, we concluded that this lifestyle was predisposing them to lead poisoning, um, which is coming from lead ammunition embedded in carcasses. So um, the lead can come from hunting activities when um, carcasses are eviscerated and the remains are fed to, to scavengers to get rid of. Um, but it also comes from game management practices. You know, in my work, I frequently come across reserve managers who will kill off excess um, game on their properties. And the game that is shot this way is frequently left in the field um, for the scavengers to feed on. Um, it also comes from mass culling operations. Now, I want to make it perfectly clear, you know, th these um, activities f form a reliable source of food for vultures, and we want that. We want vultures to get as much food as they can. And also, it's a service to the farmers, you know, it, it, vultures do this for free. They will get rid of those entrails and um, bones, etc., for free for farmers. But we must make sure that these, this food that is being fed to vultures is free of lead and other toxins. So the danger with lead bullets come when it hits the animal. So the moment it hits the animal, it hits the skin or the bone, that bullet will fragment into a million pieces. And some of those particles can be minutely small. Um, and because vultures have got such an acidic stomach, the moment they ingest those tiny fragments, and the tinier the fragment, um, the bigger the danger, it will just be dissolved in their acidic stomachs and it will be taken into their bloodstream and poison them. So um, what frequently ha happens is that the moment when you shoot an animal, um, people will remove the flesh around the wound channel and they'll take out the innards and that will be discarded for the vultures. And that is how the, the vultures are poisoned. And what's even more concerning is that the vultures, not only are the adult birds um, poisoned, but they will feed those lead fragments to their chicks. And that is what we've seen at breeding colonies such as Dronfield Nature Reserve. Dronfield Nature Reserve um, has 
one of the biggest and most important breeding colonies of whiteback vultures in the Northern Cape. And over two thirds of those chicks are being poisoned by lead every single year. And lead poisoning is perfectly preventable. Um, we can make sure that vultures are not being exposed by lead poisoning. And the only way we can do that is to make sure that animals are shot with lead-free ammunition. Um, so the, the first ev evidence is um, now emerging of what I'm talking about. You know, a couple of years ago in 2020, we started putting tracking devices on newly fledged um, whiteback vulture juveniles from John Field Nature Reserve. And we've now seen that these birds that are above a certain blood lead level um, have trouble fledging. They will fledge, but then for the next two and a half months, they'll just sit on the nest and flop from tree to tree. Um, and that can either be because they're anemic or because they just don't have the muscular strength to lift their own body weight. Um, if you contrast that to chicks that were not exposed to lead, I've got chicks such as Kevin um, that flew all the way to um, and central Angola and back to South Africa again. In the same time, um, we've got chicks such as Elsie who had a high level of lead and she is basically still sitting in her natal area. She's not left her natal area. So these results are concerning um, and it should ring alarm bells. So our, our initial research suggested that because of their scavenging lifestyle, um, vultures were more predisposed to lead poisoning than other raptors. And the reason for this is because we believed that they were obtaining the lead from carcasses that have been shot with lead ammunition. But we wanted to be a little bit more scientific about that. Um, so we launched a study a couple of years ago that used um, lead isotopic signatures to determine where the lead in vulture blood was actually coming from. And this lead isotopic study focused mainly on the chicks at Johnfield Nature Reserve. Um, as I mentioned previously, we before we've seen that over two thirds of the chicks at Johnfield Nature Reserve had elevated lead levels. Um, in other words, lead levels above what you would expect as normal. And we wanted to see where this lead was coming from. So our st study focused mainly on collecting blood samples from Johnfield birds and to compare the isotopic lead signatures in those blood samples to other potential sources. And ultimately we concluded that the birds at Johnfield Nature Reserve were receiving the lead from fragments of lead ammunition. Thousands of studies have shown the negative impact lead may have on human health. Um, it affects every organ system in the body, especially the nervous system. And the problem with lead is you can be exposed when you're in your 20s and then start displaying neurological disorders in your 50s and you will never be able to make that connection. So it really is bad news. So if, if you enjoy shooting, um, if you're a weekend hunter or a professional hunter, if you're a game reserve manager um, who uses um, ammunition frequently, be aware that you're not only endangering um, the, the health of scavenging species such as vultures, you're also potentially endangering the health of your family. The best possible way to ensure the safety of not only yourself, but also the scavengers that will ultimately feed on that carcass is to shoot with lead-free ammunition. There are multiple options now available on the local mar market. Um, many local manufacturers have stepped up to the plate and are now manufacturing lead-free alternatives. There are also a multitude of options available from the imported ammunition market. So I would encourage um, anyone who, who uses ammunition to explore these options. Get in touch with your local hunting association, consult with them, see what are the best options available and pursue those options. Um, I think it's um, important that we are cognizant of where those bullets go once it's fired out of that gun. You know, that bullet doesn't disappear, it stays in the environment, it goes into that animal. That animal is consumed by something else and that animal that consumes that will get poisoned in, in return. So if I can give shooters any advice, it's just to be mindful, think about what happens once you've shot and um, fired that gun and really explore the alternatives because the alternatives that are now available on the market are just as good as any lead-based bullet. People frequently ask me why I work on vultures and um, why should we save our vultures? But now that I'm working on them, I've grown to love them so much and they may not win prizes in the beauty stakes, 
but vultures are supremely adapted to do what they do and our world will really be a poorer place um, if we were ever to lose our vultures. <laughs>